Hello, this video is for STAT 210 handout number 11, part A, and will include pages one through nine. Okay, let's go ahead and get started then. The data set that we will use for handout 11, part A, is the impact creator data set, and that is available in our Google folder for handout 11. Handout 11 is going to consider a t-test for two independent samples, sometimes referred to as a two-sample t-test. The example that we're going to look at here is from a capstone study that was done here at Winona State University. Dr. Jen Anderson and her student were interested in comparing, look, investigating the diameter of craters that were made by throwing different projectiles into a box of sand. There were three variables in this study under investigation, and those were the height in which the projectile was dropped, the type of projectile, and the sand type. For the analysis considered here, we will be looking at the sand type. So the goal here for this handout is to investigate the effect of sand type on the diameter of the impact crater. What we would like to do here is compare the diameter of the coarse sand, which is the yellows, values against the diameter of the orange values here. So just do a comparison of the average of these numbers against the average of these numbers. This is different than handout 10 in that differences are not going to be created here. It does not make sense to compute differences between this observation here and this one down here. It's a completely different situation with fine sand down here and coarse up here. So there's not going to be, we're not going to be computing differences for handout 11. To get the analysis started to jump, we simply select analyze fit y by x. We put diameter in the response box and sand type, what we want to compare across in the x factor box. We're going to get output that looks like this to start with. You can specify the following display options. So I usually select the mean lines. I also select the points jittered quite often. And when I do that, I'm going to end up with a plot that looks like this one here. I can also select means and standard deviations, which will produce the mean standard deviation number of observations for each group. Before moving on to page three, Let's go over into jump and create these summaries. So here in jump, I'm going to sec select graph, or excuse me, analyze, fit y by x. Diameter is going to go in the response box, and sand type is going to go in the x factor box. This is the default plot that we get by jump. Again, we can ask for mean lines there. We can also ask for points jittered. What that's going to do is just kind of shake the points a little bit so that we can see all of them at once. The means and standard deviations can be obtained from the red drop down box here. We select mean and standard deviation. We also will be selecting the t-test. So I'll just show you that here. We can select t-test from the drop-down menu, and that will produce the p-values necessary to conduct our test. So we will be talking about that t-test output later on in the handout. OK, so from our means and standard deviations, we can see that the fine sand has a mean of 7.06, which is right here. The coarse sand has a mean of 6.3, which is right here. We also get information about the standard deviations in those distributions, and there were 72 observations in each group here. So the parameter of interest for this handout is actually the difference between the mean for fine sand and the mean for coarse sand. So from the data, I can estimate that difference, which is just simply the difference between the two mean lines. The average for fine sand was 7.06, so that's where that green line is at. 
and the average for coarse sand is at 6.3, and that would be this green line. So how much of a difference do I have between the two means? That is represented there with that yellow bar, and that difference is 0 0.76. Now if I were to go get another set of data, these dots are going to change and those averages are going to change. So I need to worry about how much is this quantity, the 0 0.76, going to change over repeated sampling. And that is determined by the following formula here. And that is called the standard error for the difference in means. And for this particular situation, those calculations, the standard error for the difference in the means turns out to be 0 0.281. What this equation uses is the standard deviation, so this quantity right here is just the standard deviation for the fine sand, which was 1.8, and also requires the standard deviation of the coarse sand, which was 1.57. And here is just the number of observations. So again, those values were obtained up here from my means and standard deviation output. This is what the distribution would look like over repeated sampling. So if I were to do repeated sampling many, many times, I think I did it 250 times here, this is the pattern that you're going to see. So what are some of the characteristics about this distribution? Well, first, the mean is going to be centered at the difference between my two sample averages. So the average here is going to be 0 0.76 or so. The standard deviation in this picture is what we calculated up above here. That was the standard error of the difference in means. So that quantity was 0 0.281. Also, this distribution here is going to be approximately normal. So the theory tells us that that distribution will be approximately normal. This distribution right here can be used to compute a 95% confidence interval. If I want to use this distribution for testing, I need to shift this interval down, excuse me, I need to shift this distribution down so that it's centered about zero. Remember, when we do testing, we assume that there's no difference in the means. So this distribution just needs to be slid down to be centered about zero if we do hypothesis testing. Jump is going to provide a picture of this distribution, at least the normal theory approximation to this distribution that is centered at zero. Let's talk a little bit about the form of the test statistic. So the test statistic when testing for a difference between two means has the following form. It is going to compare the variation between groups to the variation within the groups. So what do we mean by these terms? Well the numerator here is the variation between the groups and when we're looking at two groups it's simply the difference in those two averages. So that's what I was identifying earlier with that yellow bar. Now the denominator is the variation within the groups. And that's going to be the variation in the averages over repeated sampling. That is identified by the orange bars in the graphs down below. So let's consider the variation across the groups first, which again is just the difference between the two means. If the variation within each group is small, as is shown here in the middle graphic, then that difference in means is going to be large relative to the variation within the groups. So the yellow bar there is much bigger than the orange bar. The yellow bar represents the numerator, the orange bar represents the denominator. The test statistic in this situation is going to be quite large. The resulting p-value will be small. Over here on the right, the denominator there, the variation within the groups, is much larger. So the orange bars here are much larger. So over the repeated sampling, those averages are kind of bouncing all over the place. In that case, it's hard for me to say that the difference in the average, 0.76 here, is large or is big because the variation within the groups is much larger than that. So in this situation, the test statistic is actually going to be less than 1 
and it actually will be quite small. The resulting p-value will be large. Maybe I should add that in here. p-value will be large in this case. Over here, p-value will be small. So that's the form of the test statistic. OK, let's actually do our test. Step zero is to establish the research question. Is there a statistically significant difference in the average diameter for fine sand and the average diameter for coarse sand? We need to take that statement and write it in terms of parameters. And we'll usually write it in this form right here. So this is just saying that the average for the fine sand is different than the average of the coarse sand. Again, we look at that difference between those two parameters. That's the H0, is that there's no difference between those. The HA is that a difference exists. We're going to use a 5% error rate here. Step three is to complete the test. So I obtained this output by just selecting t-test from the drop-down menu. This output contains lots of information here. One thing that we should note is right underneath the t-test, it tells you how it took the differences in the means. So right where my arrow is there, you can say that you can see that jump used fine minus coarse. Okay, and that's how I have written it in the notes as well. So this difference here is 0 0.76. That's that difference that we saw up above between fine minus coarse. If jump turns this around and does coarse minus fine, all that's going to do is just flip the difference to be a negative value instead of a positive value. It will also flip the sign on the lower and upper confidence intervals. The t test or the test statistic here or the t ratio is 2.7. That is computed by looking at the variation within the groups, or excuse me, variation between the groups, which is the difference in the means. So that's just that 0 0.76 value. Subtract off 0 here. 0 again is just coming from the value in the H0. That's almost always 0 there. So we usually don't worry about this minus zero part in the numerator. That's almost always zero. And then in the denominator, we just use the standard error for the difference, which we computed that up above to be two point, excuse me, 0 0.281. So my T ratio value here is about 2.7. What that means is that the variation across the groups is 2.7 times larger than the variation within the groups. So that's considerable. So I am in a situation like this here. Okay, so the variation across the groups is the yellow bar is large compared to variation within. Now don't be confused or don't get confused by what this graph is showing you and what this graph is showing you. This is the variation. When I look at the coarse values here and the spine values, that's not the variation in the averages. That's the variation in the individual data values. The variation in the averages are going to be much, much smaller. So what we have here, the variation within the groups, is the variation in the averages over repeated sampling. So that's just saying that that average isn't going to change very much for this group. And the average over here for fine is not going to change very much over repeated sampling. How about the p-values? The p-values, like before, there's three of them. Number one is for the two-tailed test, number two is for the one-tailed right test, and number three is for the left-sided test. The two-tailed test is the version that has not equal in the HA. That's the situation that we have here. So I'm going to pull off the p-value 0.0078. Is that p-value less than my error rate? Yes, it is. So I do have enough evidence to reject the H0, or I do have enough evidence for my research question. Finally, writing my conclusion. We are 95% certain that there is a difference in the average diameter when fine sand is used and the average diameter when coarse sand is used. Again, there's three parts to this.
tell me what your conclusion is or your decision, excuse me. What are you testing? It's the second part. And then the p-value here or the amount of evidence that you have is your third part. How about the 95% confidence interval? The 95% confidence interval uses that sampling distribution. Again, that distribution of what the difference in the averages is going to look like over repeated sampling. We know that this has an average of 0.76. That standard error difference or that standard deviation here is 0.281. So just a rough confidence interval would be if you multiply your standard deviation by 2. So let's say that it's 0.3 multiplied by 2 is about 0.6. So my upper end point is going to be up here at about 1.35 or so. 0.76 plus 0.6. And then the lower end point is going to be down around 0.2 or so. If you want to get a more exact interval, which is what the computer does, it actually uses an IC value. And that IC value is coming from a T distribution again with a certain degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom that we're going to want to use is provided by the output. Here's the calculations for the interval. I would just take the difference minus the 1.98. That's my interval coefficient from the t-distribution, which I will show you here in a minute. And then I multiply that 1.98 by my standard error for the difference, which is, again, the standard deviation in this distribution, the 0.281 value. Do that algebra, you get a lower end point of 0.2, you get an upper end point of about 1.32. The margin of error is just half the width of that interval. So the margin of error is how much we go up from the middle and down from the middle, and that quantity is 0.56. The interpretation then is we are 95% certain that the average diameter, when fine sand is used, will be 0.20 centimeters up to 1.32 centimeters bigger or larger than the average diameter when coarse sand is used. So this interval here is just expressing the degree of difference between those two means. The means were calculated again with fine sand first. And this interval stays positive, which means fine, fine sand is going to be larger than coarse sand. You'll need to keep track of the order in which the differences were computed when you're doing the interpretation of the interval. Real quickly, the interval coefficient, you can go out to the app again to get that. You're going to want to use a degrees of freedom here of that 139.3. Again, that's given by jump here. Some people use different values for this degrees of freedom. They have things called the conservative degrees of freedom or the pooled degrees of freedom. We're not going to get into those details. Those are details for STAT 310. We can just grab the degrees of freedom off of what JUMP provides here. I would select the two-sided interval, and you can see that the x value here is 1.98. Okay, a couple things here, just some final thoughts and then also the assumptions. So the hypothesis test considered whether or not there was a difference, and we concluded that there was indeed a difference. The p-value there was less than 0.05. And then from the 95% confidence interval, which was, again was completely positive, that interval stayed positive, and the difference was mu sub fine minus mu sub coarse, so I know that fine sand is going to be larger than the diameter, for fine sand is going to be larger than for the coarse sand. Okay, we don't want to forget about the conditions for the test. Down here on page 9, there's three conditions. These are listed in order of importance. The first is that the two groups must be independent of one another. And the observations within each group must be independent of one another. Now, there's actually not a test for this assumption. You just need to make sure that the data was collected in a form in which to ensure that the groups were independent of one another. So here, when they were doing the testing for the fine sand, that can't have any impact on the testing for coarse sand. They need to, for example, get rid of all the fine sand out of the box that they were using. It has to be completely separate. 
Number two is the two groups should have the same population variances. Now there is a test for jump that we can do this. It's called the unequal variance test and can be found from the red drop down menu. The test that I use in jump again was the T test and that actually does the test without assuming the variances are equal. So it does not require assumption number two. So one more time here, when you're doing a t-test in jump, it actually does not need to have the variances be the same. If you wanted to run the test where the variances were the same, that is called a pooled t-test, and that can be found here underneath jump. Jump identifies that it is doing the unequal variance test, or it's doing the t-test, underneath the uh, heading there. So above, I guess, above where our output is at, it's telling us it's assuming unequal variances. The last assumption or condition is that the group should follow a normal distribution, and you can verify that with histograms. Here I have the histogram for coarse sand, and here I have the histogram for fine sand. Fine sand looks pretty good. Coarse sand doesn't look real great for that normal assumption. Assumption number three is the weakest assumption, though, so I'm not too concerned about this situation. Okay, that does it then for this handout. And this handout again was handout number 11, part A, pages one through nine. Thank you.